returning to this invoice screen, I've just typed this information in here. Now let's say I've typed in four or five lines and not everyone's a good speller. I'm not a good speller sometimes. Um, and I want to check the spelling on this. We do have a method for you to, sp you to check spelling. The check spelling is activated by double clicking on certain boxes. If I go down the bottom here, we'll see here. Spell checker can be activated by double clicking on any of the address boxes, the reference boxes, and the description box. So if I double click here, I double click here, here, or here, it will automatically start to check spell. So if I double click this box now, it brings up, it just checked that. Spelling's correct. Double click. Aha, check speller come up. And it said ST for street. For some reason it doesn't register that in the UX dictionary. I'm going to, I could either click it to ignore that, or I could say, actually, I want it to remember that. So in future, when it sees that, it can skip it. So I'm going to say, add that to the dictionary. It's gone over here, and it's found this suburb here of Granville. It says, again, that's not a word in the dictionary. I can ignore it if I wanted to, but I'm going to add it again. So this time now, if I double-click that line again, you'll notice it's discovered it and found it and moved on. Okay, so that's how you turn it on. So if I click this line here, it's found wood pine. It doesn't know what that is. I'm just going to add that because I know that that's a street I'm, I'm going to be working at for often. Um, and there we are. So I think that's pretty basic. And you'll notice, so you've got to double-click these individual lines to turn that on. And here, in the description, it activates the um, spell checker as well. So I can press ignore to ignore that. But I don't ignore it that once. If I click it on again, it's going to find it again. So if I click it, ignore, it ignores it for that once. But in this case, that's a bit of rubbish, so I'm going to get rid of that in a minute. Down the bottom here, I want to discuss this section. We have in Easy Ads a products list. But what I want to do is just fix this particular invoice up for a minute, just to make it look a bit more respectable. Repairs. There we go. I'm just going to write one word. I really don't care. Okay, so I'm going to put quantity one, and I charge them 100 bucks. Right, so at the moment I put $100 here, 100 in this, it automatically added 10%, but that's the rate of sales tax to that item, because remember this is a, I'm creating an invoice that includes sales tax, so it automatically added that $10, and the invoice is now $110. This is obviously the guts of the invoice. This is where you put in the quantity and the description and the unit price, which is the, which is the price itself, and the tax and everything that calculates. Now, I don't need to go into how all that happens because I think that's pretty logical for everyone. But what I want to do want to put out, put out is you can actually, this comes from the product list. You can create a product list within Easy Ads. So if you're a business that has particular items that are always, always being invoiced for, you might want to create a, uh, an invoice list or a product list that lists all these items so that you don't need to go ahead and type them out all the time and remember what prices are, etc., etc. Now, Mr. Smithfield's maintenance service, he also provides, I'm just going to create a new invoice here, I'm going to let you see, that he also creates, um, he also creates barbecue settings. As a sideline activity, he creates barbecue settings. Now, I'm just going to put something in here, Mr. Smith again, I don't care, and I want to let you see that. If I press select, Previously, he saved, I'm going to say that, previously he saved to the address box, book, some barbecue settings. So he creates barbecue settings and he normally sells these to some camping shops and that sort of thing. So he can sell a six foot table and that's his normal rate, $125. So he can click that and he can select one of them and off he goes and he can enter in one price. You can go back down here again, press select, and he's going to sell some six foot benches and he can press two. So he's sold two of these seats, one of these tables, and it's done worked out the information for him based upon what was up here. What he already had in here. So that's the basics of what the product list can be used for. So what happens if this particular guy now Okay, so let's say that now he also sells umbrellas, big massive umbrellas that go with his tables. And yes, and this guy here wants to purchase the umbrellas off him as well. So he might put umbrellas, umbrella, and let's say that he has um, different size umbrellas, one for the four foot table and one for the six foot table. So it might be six foot table. 
but because this is a new product he's he's creating he actually hasn't got this in the address book so that's why I typed that in there so in this case I can add that to the address book but so but because my spelling isn't that crash hot I'm going to double click to check my spelling first I'm double clicking on the line and it comes up and it says well that's not the correct spelling so I'm going to change that oh sorry it didn't give me a um I couldn't work out why that didn't work. It couldn't actually understand what it, what it was I wanted there. It didn't it didn't actually give me a useful word to change it to because I was looking to click the change box. I'm going, why isn't that coming up? But it didn't actually give me something. It couldn't actually work out what I wanted, but it gave me a list of examples of what I might need. It. And there was the umbrella sitting there. So I'm going to change that now. And it's now changed that and it checked the rest of that as it continued on. So now that's the correct spelling. That's exactly how I want it to appear in my address section, except except I want that to have a big capital U. I'm now, I can now add it to my product list. Now how I do that is I go over here and it says add to list. So this icon was plucking it from the product list. If I know I haven't got that item in my product list and I want to add it, I go over here and I put add. But right now I better give it a price. Let's say I sell those umbrellas for $85. So I can put add to list, click that icon, it jumps away and you saw, see that came up and it said done. That's it, it added it to the list. Now the only problem is, if I keep clicking that folks, I've now added three occurrences of that entry in the product list. Because the product list is basically dumb, it's going to go off whatever information you've put in there if you keep pressing that icon, it's going to keep just simply adding a new entry there for you. So right now, I've pressed that three times. I'm going to press it four times now. Now I'm going to go ha back and have to t edit my address, my product list, and delete some of that because I don't need them in there. But that's okay. I can do that later. So I'm just going to show you that that actually occurred. If I press select now, we'll see it's actually entered four entries because I kept pressing that. So I'm going to press delete. I'm just going to delete these extra ones I don't want because that was me doing that and I'm going to close out of that because I'm not going to select anything else I don't need anything I'm going to close out of that and there it is so what I wanted to point out was you see the entry there and the amount the actual correct amount that was there and that's basically this area in total so this selects it naturally this delete button deletes the only thing with the delete in this area to speed the system up it doesn't actually give you an option delete yes no if I click this it automatically deletes so just be aware that that actually happens. And you can change the rate of tax if you need to for that line. Now, if, for example, in your country there are specific amounts or specific charges when you charge for jobs that do not include sales tax, but this is a tax invoice, but you know this particular element is sales tax exempt. I can't imagine what that might be. I haven't seen any such thing, but... I know there could be situations where that that exists. So if something is sales tax exempt and you type something in here, okay, so I'm going to type in 100 here, $100, and it's still at 10%, but because we know this is sales tax exempt, I'm going to click this percentage column here. I'm going to click this little icon. This pop-up box comes up, and it says you can change the rate of sales tax for any of these individual items. In this case, I'm going to say zero. I'm going to press OK. And it's now made that line sales tax exempt. Or it hasn't provided sales tax for that line. Okay, I know that that is a sales exempt item. And normally, of course, if I had a particular occurrence of a sales tax exempt item, you'd want to mention something here that this, this was, you know, item sales tax exempt or something like that. So that people know, oh, what's, why isn't, didn't that have sales tax added to it? I would imagine you would do this anyway. But like I said, I've never seen any occurrence where this would apply. But I know it probably does. Okay, so that's how you can change it. So if, for example, in your country you have different rates of sales tax, you have to apply for different items, you could obviously change this particular line here if you want to whatever rate. Obviously that 10% is coming up because that's the Australian standard rate of sales tax. In your country it might be 12%, it could be 5%, whatever it is it's going to come up as the default. Whatever the default is you've set in the system is going to be the first amount that comes up anywhere in the program. It's now calculated that line on 5%. $85 at 5%. You notice that? If I put that at 20%, it adds 
20% to this. Watch this. 85 stays the same, but it adds that. So it, and it tells you what the rate is over here. 